Uh, hi everyone in the room, hello everyone uh, online. Uh, thanks for joining for this short one. I'm uh, Stefan, I work at uh, TDF, I'm part of the, of the team as a QA analyst, uh, coming close to uh, a year working with the team. And uh, what I'm doing today is uh, presenting a bit of an update on uh, a dashboard that I've uh, created a while ago but has kept uh, evolving. And uh, what that can hopefully mean for the QA people, for the QA team, the QA project, but as well hopefully uh, helping out more on the development side to give somewhat some direction, uh, getting to use that Bugzilla data uh, to try and inform what we do next. So we'll go back and forth between the, the tool and uh, the presentation just to give you an idea of what it looks like now and uh, potentially to make you want to try it out, see if it help you, if it can help you in your work in any way uh, mm -hmm. and also to uh, let you give you us feedback and me feedback to see if uh, you've got other ideas how we could use that data better. So we'll have a quick look back at some QA stats over the years, or at least over the last um, couple of years, um, how processing Bugzilla, Bugzilla data can help QA uh, and developers and try and inform development as much as we can. And I also want to talk about my impression after working in the space for quite a few months uh, and talk about how much it takes a whole community and communication and uh, interaction between different projects to keep things moving forward. Yeah. So in recent months and since uh, roughly the end of last year, the end of 2022, we had a, a good reduction in unconfirmed reports or so reports that usually haven't been treated haven't been processed, uh, triaged by the, the QA team. And, but over the last few months, we also have seen that this triaging pace slows down significantly and we're getting to a point where it's a bit more stable uh, around um, 1,100, 1,200 unconfirmed reports, which is quite significant still, but uh, I have to remember that we started uh, over 1,800, uh, which is largely the impact of the uptake of uh, LibreOffice uh, in uh, COVID times as well. So as this triaging pace kind of slows down for various reasons, we can also see that uh, the open reports uh, on the platform are, uh, are going down. And it kind of makes sense that if we are triaging reports, then we've got more new reports that need fixing, right? Identified uh, as actual issues. Uh, so you've got that increase of, uh, in open reports, but it's interesting to see that even though we're quite stable with uh, the triaging staying around 1100, 1200 and confirmed reports, we do have that trend continuing down of reports getting closed. And it makes me think that we have to keep working at finding a balance between triaging while revisiting the very large backlog that we have uh, those graphs might be a little bit misleading, might be a bit of a data science crime, but uh, we're removing the zero on there and you'll see in the tool that uh, I've actually a big space that I'm omitting there. But we, we're looking at trends here. And um, what I'd love to see is seeing that number of unconfirmed reports going down as well as the number of open reports. We're fixing things at the same time as we're triaging and we're getting that volume uh, to a more manageable uh, size. So hopefully we can reach a point when got, it has a kind of snowballing effect and we can make it easier to find duplicates in the database, to reveal trends, identify priorities in development. And we need, as I said, to deal with new reports that constant flow that's about 17 new reports a day uh, over the last, last year, at the same time as we deal with historical reports that have been uh, around for ages. 
So it makes me also think about what new actions we can bring in to promote uh, that trend. And one idea would be to uh, introduce some QA focus every week to make use of those meta bugs, those topics where we can work together as a team and try and review a large number of, uh, of reports linked to the same topic. But also it's an opportunity to review the theme over the last few years and, uh, and potentially inform development later on. So I'll, more, I'll move to the browser here to the tool, which you'll be able to um, have a look at later on if you wish. Uh, on this page, we've got how numbers progress over the years. And one of the most important ones, we saw a little bit of it, is the progression of unconfirmed reports. So probably a better idea to focus on uh, the right side of the graph because this is based on a Bugzilla dump that doesn't necessarily have all the reports from uh, early years. But roughly from 2017, this is quite re reliable. And we can see that very big increase in a uh, number of unconfirmed reports after COVID started and the effort to reduce that number, uh, especially from the end of 2022. And corresponding to that below, we've got the trend in open reports. But as you've seen, <laughs> this is a lot harder to see when you don't have uh, that uh, focus, that zoom on that last part. But Overall, it's, it is nice to see that uh, decrease in the number of open reports if we f zoom in and hopefully we can get that going, keep that going. Now you can play with this tool and, and focus on the area or the time period that you're interested in. For example, uh, if you want to focus on the last year, last 365 yeah. years and yeah, sorry, yeah. Uh, So on those charts, uh, no, but I'll move to a page where uh, we can um, remove the enhancement requests. Yeah, good question. And it would be interesting to see uh, the proportion on, that, on those charts, it's true. Um, in this other tab, we've got also the, the, what I call the pulse, which is more about how many of something happens every day. Uh, over the last year, we can see the, the change in, uh, in uh, the rate of reporting issues or opening reports, including enhancement requests, um, and hovering around 17 reports a day, which is quite significant to deal with. Um, but if we look at the trend over the last few years, again, we can see where that peak in reporting happened uh, in 2020, around here. Sorry? Which version was released when? <laughs> uh, that we can have a look at. Uh, I'll move to the snapshot uh, tab where we've got a, a few colorful graphs. And here, if we want to, we can remove the enhancement requests uh, from those graphs. And just to answer uh, that question, if we want to see that peak, we've got the first version affected here, which is, I, I zoomed in a little bit, so it's a bit hard to see the numbers. But um, the, the peak would be around uh, 7.0 here. Um, oh, hang on. Yeah. So 7.0, 7.1, where we had uh, quite a lot. But again, now this is first version affected. This is data that keeps changing as we retest and we figure out when something started. But it is still um, an indicator. Now with this chart, if you're interested in, in comparing as well what comes from before LibreOffice was forked, uh, you can also include the, what was inherited from uh, OpenOffice at the beginning here, uh, which uh, dwarfs the, the other versions here, but this is perfectly expected. And this is uh, not including the enhancement request as I turned that off just before. So there's a few more charts that I'll, I'll let you um, explore in your own time if you want about different fields and, and um, that are available in Bugzilla. We can clearly see, for example, in the components uh, graph that the uh, uh, writer is by far the most popular um, component, most used, followed by Calc uh, and Impress. And 
you can also play with the setting of uh, making categorized bar plot proportional to see how different categories compare without looking at absolute numbers, but looking at proportions. So as we expect, we'll see higher severity bug being uh, the ratio of fixed bug being higher compared to, for example, uh, normal and minor. You'd expect also trivial to be uh, more popular also for newcomers as easy hacks and a similar uh, trend in, in priority. It's also interesting to see the, the proportion of um, issues that have been fixed as opposed to resolved for other reasons. So 72% of resolved issues uh, or 73% uh, are for other reasons than if identified fix. So in there we'll have uh, quite a bit of works for me. We're not sure what exactly fixed it, uh, but one of the biggest chunks here is uh, uh, duplication which uh, uh, I'll mention later on as well. And looking back at the first version affected, we see as things settle over the years, again, we're looking at proportions here rather than absolute numbers. Uh, it's a bit hard to see on the screen here, but we see that usually we settle around 12% uh, uh, of issues that are not resolved, uh, that are unresolved in uh, older versions and obviously a lot more in the more recent versions. So going back to my slides, this tool has, there's a few aspects to it, right? We just saw the chart just before. So what I want to do with the chart is uh, inform and uh, also help the team maybe react to trends. Um, as we add more charts, we can maybe see that there's areas that we should focus on in QA um, or that we should split our attention between uh, dealing with the backlog, looking at older issues and try and get that, that um, um, combined effort going. But it's also useful to illustrate and communicate, illustrate achievements. It's very nice to see that trend going down when we, we work together on, on triaging bugs. Throughout the tool, there will be links to action, or there is links to actions to, to straight away go to Bugzilla to find a list of bugs to triage or unconfirmed ones, or the ones that are tagged as need info, tags that as uh, need comment from the QA team. So we have one click away, something to work on which can be handy for uh, especially newcomers to get ideas on what to work. And I'll also show you in a minute the table that uh, allows you to search for bug reports a bit differently, uh, maybe a little bit more comfortably than uh, Bugzilla that we all um, love. <laughs> and so you can filter easily in that table. It's a good alternative. Uh, in my opinion, and also makes it easy to create lists exporting the data and potentially find that list again on Bugzilla later on. But that table integrates also a kind of aggregate ranking that is calculated from uh, a few different indicators. We already have in Bugzilla the fields of uh, uh, importance, or well, importance as a whole, but severity and priority that we tweak as we go. But we thought it was interesting to put together a kind of ranking that takes into account more factors and maybe does that a bit more automatically as an indicator, not necessarily an absolute truth of how important an issue is, but as an indicator, an extra indicator that could help us focus on some issues or even reconsider if some issues are important or not. So obviously this is open to tweaking, but it's quite transparent on the tool as well. We've got this table of how much weight each one of the factors has. For example, number of duplicates or regression. Is it a regression? Uh, and data loss are pretty high up in that weighing, uh, considered uh, by me and, and others as uh, quite important, uh, as well as accessibility issues. Uh, Whereas on the other end of the spectrum, you'd have number of comments and age of the bug report not necessarily meaning that much. 
so getting a weighing that's uh, much lower. One addition that was recent was uh, does the bug report has a link to a UR, to a ask LibreOffice uh, question, which is pretty important in that. I'll get to that. Uh, pretty important in that. Quite a few people will ask a question on that forum, but not necessarily go through uh, the, the effort of reporting a bug. A lot of people find the platform quite daunting. Uh, yeah, Cor? Yeah, if you want uh, feedback right away, mm, what sure. you're asking for, the uh, number of duplicates is somehow related to the number of people in CC. Yeah. So this is counting, counting double. Mm -hmm. uh, not that I'm saying that I'm disagreeing, but just noticing. That's a really good point. Um, to some extent, there will be people CCing themselves when they find the bug uh, without uh, reporting it, but it's overwhelmingly, I think it, it, it would be the case that it's, it's a duplication there. Yeah. And that we, we can review that and lower that for uh, both. No, but it's, still, still yeah. the number of duplicates is it's a quite indication of Interest. of that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, related to that, um, to some extent, I was considering priority and severity to be, well, isn't that already a duplicate of this whole effort, right? So considering, should we lower priority and severity as well? Because they're already factors or already values that we've decided on based on looking at the rest. Uh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah well. Sorry, say that again. If it's a data loss issue, it is yeah. a bit of 10. On the <laughs> a 10 on the scale, so we're extending, we're doubling the scale. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah, well. Yeah. Sure. So Gabor uh, mentioned that, well, agreed with Core that uh, it's uh, something probably needs to be done about the duplication uh, between number of duplicates and uh, people copied in, CC. Um, but also uh, giving more importance to data loss issues, uh, which is, um, in your opinion, uh, more important than anything else in the table, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank. Well, this is in feedback that I'm taking on board, and uh, this will always be to some extent subjective. And eventually, what I'd like to do is maybe put it, giving the option uh, for the users of the tool to define their own ranking. Uh, as they wish. Yeah. But thank you for that, that feedback. It's very valuable. So <clears throat> going back to the tool, uh, let's have a look at this table just to uh, illustrate it. So we do have a link to the Bugzilla Advanced Search, just in case the data is a little bit outdated. Um, we can always go to that. We can do a general search here, and uh, I find the search quite handy if we want to do something quick with filters by going to, uh, in the summary, looking for crashes or maybe uh, something related to formulas uh, in the component, calc, looking at fairly recent reports, and then uh, sorting that by uh, aggregate rank which is that rating we were just talking about with the information displayed at the bottom and, uh, about the weighing. And then if that it's list of... Yeah. Sorry? It's not a live data. So it is based on a data dump that um, updates um, that I need to update, but it is uh, from yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I do a lot of search in the Baxada. And uh, I go on and I see uh, two problems. Mm -hmm. uh, one is the default setting is 
the time of one day. The, Sorry, the, the, the default time is one day, and that's uh, um, often from, <laughs> I forgot to change it to delete yeah. it. It's um, nonsense to to uh, uh, look for duplicates in the oh. in one day. <laughs> I've actually never noticed that. I don't. Uh, uh, to me, my default my one, default search would be. Okay. All right. And the other problem is uh, that um, some uh, wording is not uh, unique, and there are uh, some reports which uh, mm. use um, abbreviations. Yeah. And uh, my wish would be when a uh, um, bug report is uh, set to, to you or uh, put to a meta bug, uh, that uh, a wording is repeated without abbreviation mm. and with um, in wording uh, which are usually used. Uh, for example, when the uh, user writes, uh, I cannot rotate the, pic the picture. Mm -hmm. But uh, we internally uh, do not use the word picture, but the word image. Yeah. We will not find this bug. Right. Yeah. And, That's a big uh, challenge. So it would be uh, good uh, when uh, uh, this bug is, is handled by the QA, when it, uh, that would um, repeat it. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. Where in a way that the word image appears. Yeah. So. Um, and uh, yeah. same for when uh, someone uh, use uh, a CS. Was it CS? <laughs> uh, it's a character style, but CS I cannot search. Exactly. Yeah. So um, uh, there need to be an, an um, repeating of mm -hmm. the report in words which are uh, suitable for a search. Yeah. So um, there's. Oh, sorry. Uh, okay. Oh, time flies. Can you tell me? When? Yeah. Does that work now? So it is my, so uh, Regina was talking about uh, uh, difficulties with the search on Bugzilla. I agree that there's quite a few quirks and that uh, for a, good, a good, good query, we often have to think about variations in spelling, about um, uh, ab potential abbreviations and, uh, um, um, and using the root of a word to have all the variations that correspond to it. It's quite tricky and it gets, so I'm using to thinking of solutions. I'm wondering if uh, there's potential, and maybe in the new version of Bugzilla, upcoming new version of Bugzilla, to have some uh, terms that are automatically matched if they are searched. Yeah. Obviously, for abbreviations yeah. that are a bit obscure, that's very hard to do. Uh, but I see the situation of the user yeah. who will write a bug report. Yeah. And we always say, please search for duplicates. Yeah. And, uh, he cannot find some, yeah. some duplicate mm -hmm. because what he is saying does not, uh, does not appear in yeah. existing bug reports. Yeah. Uh, so my suggestion is when a bug report is handled, um, the problem should be described in mm. other words which make it uh, findable. Yeah. And that's kind of related. It's um, something that I not that long ago re added to the wiki. Uh, we have a page that explains quite a few abbreviations and I added a warning at the top that says carefully abbreviations can be can feel like sometimes gatekeeping but also uh, just hard to to understand for many new contributors and uh, we, therefore we recommend to to spell them out uh, when when practical and um, but it's true that it's also the, the, the responsibility of the, of the team to make sure that all the relevant terms are included in the comments uh, when discussing the issue. That's a very good point. Thank you. Um, now with this uh, table, we can uh, grab whatever's in view uh, in a few different formats. Uh, fortunately, no ODS here, here sorry. Um, library limitation. But uh, very easy to copy that and uh, keep 
a record of your of your quick search here and paste that in your uh, in your spreadsheet to then work on on it later on or so I say and also to take a series of uh, of bug numbers and find that again on Bugzilla if need be because the search allows you to input a number of uh, bug identifiers and get that list saved or if you need to Now, moving on, I'm <laughs> looking at the time. Um, other aspects of it, we had recently a look at, or had a, recently a look at meta bugs. We've got quite a few of those categorizing bugs used to, to put in that block field uh, in reports to uh, say that it talks about this particular topic or this particular aspect of the, of the project. Uh, I've added a couple of visualizations to the tool including a bubble chart that looks at the age of the bug, of the, of the uh, tracking bug, of the meta bug, as well as the fraction uh, resolved. So uh, higher up will be more, um, higher percentage of resolution and lower would be lower percentage. Uh, this can be useful, and we'll have a look at it in a second, to pinpoint some areas of interest that maybe are a bit forgotten left to the side that doesn't attract much attention and uh, potential and tender ideas for the future. I also added a network visualization. So we don't see the links on that bubble chart between the different ones. But uh, in an altern uh, alternative visualization of those meta bugs, you can uh, quickly see how they are linked to each other and have a better overview of how it affects the project. That's a question. So let's go to that one. Um, so here we've got the size of the bubble that corresponds to the total dependencies. If you want to, you can switch it to just the open dependencies, see what's left to fix. The color corresponds to the fraction of regressions in the meta bug, which can be useful to pinpoint uh, regression hotspots. And if you want to, to have a more interesting scale here because obviously a lot of the yellow ones will be focused on regressions. For example, this one is fast parser regressions. This one is regressions dialog tunneling. Uh, with the best guess, we can remove the regression only metas and um, also decide on, on a filter to, to have a minimum number of dependencies to filter out the really small ones, also a minimum age in weeks to uh, see meta bugs that have matured over the years. And then visually we can also uh, focus on one part of the graph, maybe below 50% resolution and see if there's any interesting topics in there. For example, undo redo has a, a lighter color, higher proportion of regressions, um, uh, quite important in size and quite low in proportion fixed. Uh, similarly, we've got chart, the chart meta bug up there that's in a, in a similar position. Uh, and if you look around, you'll find that there's also uh, chart enhancements at the bottom. Obviously, enhan enhancements, enhancement meta bugs will be quite low. Uh, that's expected. So that's something to explore. Again, we've got a table at the bottom if we want to filter or to have a look at what we've filtered already, uh, search for meta bugs and also use again that aggregate rate ranking. But in this case, it's an average of all the dependencies and bubbling up at the top. We've got accessibility and uh, a lot of uh, also docx uh, meta bugs in here. Finally, that uh, network visualization I just mentioned is right next to it in here. Um, the main take home message here is that we've got too many meta bugs <laughs> and it's a big mess. Uh, but while physics are sorting themselves out in the middle, uh, you can have a look at what's around. Maybe there's potential meta bugs in here that are often for no good reason and could be linked to something else. You can see little clusters of meta bugs uh, that are not necessarily connected to the rest. Uh, for example, trying to find something interesting here. 
Well. Or uh, <laughs> you can focus on a specific metabug by clicking on it and getting uh, two degrees of uh, separation uh, with other metabugs and see how those ones interact with arrows to see which one blocks which one. There's a lot in there, so to find your way, you can also use the drop down, do a quick, for example, chart, uh, press enter and highlight that chart metabug in here and see how it's related to other others. And as you hover over it, you've got the link that takes you straight to that bug, the description, the number of reports and the percent resolved on there. Now, I am very close. I always finish with not enough time, but I just wanted to finish wrapping up with how this experience tells me that there's, um, there's, there's really a need for an integrated effort. And that's, in my opinion, what will work best to keep moving forward with such a large amount, a large volume of, uh, of reports linked to such a uh, successful and, and, and large project like LibreOffice. Uh, in QA specifically, I like the focus on catching duplicates early so we can reduce that, that, that kind of wasted effort by contributors and catching regressions early for very obvious reasons to get it fixed as soon as possible while it's still easy to get fixed and while the contributor is still active. But around QA, there's a lot of work that goes on. Um, and I want to highlight those links, for example, with the design and UX team. Um, in particular with Heiko, working on a backlog really hand in hand with the QA team uh, using our, uh, our skills in different ways. Obviously testing is a very important topic and needs uh, to, to be continuously looked at, uh, including why not in asking for newcomers to implement a test as a compulsory easy hack on top of other maybe more interesting activities. Documentation and recording things in release notes is also extremely important for people to focus on new features and get, uh, get uh, those ones ready for release. Uh, but also good documentation means that there's less misunderstanding and potentially bug reports that are about not understanding the feature rather than an actual issue. Linking with uh, Ask LibreOffice, our Q&A website, uh, because, as I mentioned before, a lot of people won't necessarily report something on Bugzilla, but will ask questions. And active localization, because we also get issues reported about missing strings. But last but not least, that's a big one here, <laughs> sorry, maybe a little bit violent, but uh, a welcoming, diverse community, fostering an enjoyable environment. Uh, that's also how we keep people involved keep people happy and interested in gaining those new skills uh, alongside us. Thanks for joining today. Hopefully uh, you thought that was interesting. You've got the link uh, with the QR code to the tool. Very happy to hear what you think, your ideas. And um, again, as always, thank you all for uh, your contribution in that space. Uh, it's much appreciated. Thanks. Thank you.